Welcome, sports fans. This is EDUC 4703U, Problem and Inquiry-Based Learning. This video clip is entitled, Variances from Traditional Higher Education Courses. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Which of the variances noted have you encountered before in educational contexts? What are the distinctions between synchronous and asynchronous technologies? Number three, according to the video, what extra component is added to learning experiences when a learning community is developed? And number four, how would you describe authentic assessment in your own words? It's presumed that most higher education courses experienced so far in your education have been fairly traditional in that they have been lecture-based with the instructor talking to the course content that may be simultaneously displayed using some form of presentation, either on a chalkboard, whiteboard, or using presentation software such as PowerPoint. The learner's role in this type of scenario is primarily passive and would include taking notes, following along with the argument as developed by the instructor, and trying to remember the presented ideas as well as to understand them. Assessment in this scenario is usually accomplished using some sort of testing where questions are posed to the learner and the learner must respond. The majority of questions posed would be of the recall type, with few requiring working through limited problem questions, probably of a mathematical nature. While the picture painted here may be overgeneralized, the scenario will probably be recognized to most learners. The intent here is not to critique this type of teaching learning scenario, but to point out how this course tries to deviate from that traditional format. As indicated in the course outline and in the previous video clip, each class section in this course will consist of three integrated components. The first of those components is a series of video clips which will constitute the information portion of the course. These video clips will be placed in public YouTube locations which makes them accessible to a wider audience than just those registered in the course. The intent of the video clip presentation is to present a situation or a context within which a problem or problems can be recognized by you, the learner, and to instigate discussion through the use of posed analysis and synthesis questions rather than to present a series of ideas that are to be understood and remembered for testing on an exam at a later date. Secondly, synchronous group tutorial activities are offered in order to provide a structured discussion about the situations or context presented in the video clips. Each tutorial session will be attended by the facilitator, instructor, and perhaps a teaching assistant. The role of the instructor and TA is to aid in the facilitation of the discussion and activities, not to provide information regarding what is to be done or directions to follow. The discussion will be structured around the analysis and synthesis questions posed in the video clips, but these are really intended to start the discussion rather than to limit it. By sharing ideas and insights into discussion topics, you'll be exposed to others' perspectives and points of view that will feed into developing new understandings of the presented situations and contexts and problems which have been recognized. Ideas will be posed that can lead to the creation of problem solutions that can be taken further in the last integrated component, which is the third component, the online small group activities, which will provide additional opportunities to talk with others about the problems identified in the video clips and initially discussed in the tutorial sessions. Postings in the discussion forum will allow others to know what you are thinking about and to initially identify potential group members who are interested in similar kinds of ideas and situations context within which to set the PBLOs. These will be defined in, in a later session that you will be developing. The majority of work on the assignments, readings, and PBLO development will occur in these online sessions. The majority of currently available online programs and courses make use of asynchronous technologies, that is, online resources that are used to facilitate information sharing outside of the constraints of time and place among a group of people. Examples of asynchronous technologies are email, discussion forums, the user wall on Facebook, among others. Each of these technologies allows the user to post information to a network site 
so that at a later time the information can be accessed by other users at other locations and responses can be made. These types of technologies are worthwhile in that they allow for communication between individuals and within groups and they allow time for deeper reflection as you can take time between receiving a message and responding to it. This course will make use of asynchronous technology for purposes which require higher order thinking skills such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation and creation. Learning using online synchronous technologies, including such things as instant messaging and video conferencing, among others, allows for synchronized, that is, same time and same virtual space communication and has the potential to support online learners in the development of learning communities. Synchronous online learning has been reported as being more social in nature than asynchronous online learning and it avoids frustration by allowing for conversations in real time. Video conferencing gives the added benefit of being able to detect and decipher facial expressions allowing for greater nuancing of the interactions. Recently, the line separating synchronous and asynchronous technologies is being blurred. Innovations such as Google Hangouts and the incorporation of real-time collaborative text editing in Google Docs puts the power of synchronous communication into what have been fairly traditional email and document writing applications, transforming them into incredibly powerful collaborative working tools. Many of the tools which can be used in this course, such as Google Docs, Twitter, instant messaging programs such as MSN Messenger, etc., Skype, YouTube, Prezi, and CMAP, are either synchronous tools or they move into that space, and even Blackboard, UIT's learning management system, has some tools that can function synchronously. For instance, the chat. One of the intents of problem-based learning, as will be seen in future video clips, is to support the development of learner intellectual in independence. This is similar to what is experienced when learning to ride a bicycle. See the embedded clip. The supports are gradually removed until the bike rider is left to progress on their own. This course will start with a fair amount of support available in the tutorial and asynchronous systems, but over the five weeks, more and more of that support will be removed until you, the learners, will be directing your own learning. The displayed graph suggests that as the teacher or professor TA direction decreases over the uh, time, more and more of the activity and responsibility for learning will accrue to the students. This may be a very different experience for you, However, the principle is fundamental to PBL. The activities in this course expect you to develop a community of learners. This is based on the idea of communities of practice as proposed by Etienne Wenger and Jean Levet. And here's an explanation of the implications of instigating the development of community of learners. The quote is taken from a 2011 interview with Etienne and the interview can be found at ASTD.org as found on the screen on the slide. Here's the quote. The concept has become a cornerstone for a social learning, social theory of learning. Through participation in a community of practice, you can see learning not only as the acquisition of information and skill, but also the transformation of a person, for instance, from a non-member to a member of the community. More generally, learning is a transformation of identity and becoming a certain kind of person is what gives meaning to learning. Recently, I was talking with some researchers at medical uh, education at Vancouver, and for them, viewing medical education as the transformation of identity was very important, going from just, I'm a regular citizen, to I'm a doctor. But they were saying that traditional medical education is very focused on information and skills and there's very little talk about how students are being transformed into a person who is going to be able to give care to others. Having a theory to talk about that was very useful." End quote. Discussion is very often used as a tool for learning. When designed properly and used thoughtfully, discussion tasks can be a very effective learning tool that promote creativity as well as generate meaningful interaction and understanding for the learner. Well-designed discussion tasks lead to progressive knowledge-seeking inquiry, and that reference to Scardamalia and Bereiter, 1994, or expansive learning, which is a reference to Engstrom, 1999, where learners are actively synthesizing new information with prior knowledge and experiences in the process creating not only new knowledge, 
but also new understandings of the learning process. The process uh, that's suggested is the one that's shown on the slide, an emphasis on discourse by Niao and Yun San, uh, 2003, and the reference is given there as well. Course expectations require that all students will need to interact in a number of ways. Talking in the sy synchronous tutorial sessions will be necessary in order to explore the ideas introduced in the video clips. You will also need to engage in posting discussions and the ideas in the asynchronous activities to come to new understandings and build new knowledge. Authentic assessment uh, can be defined as a form of assessment in which students are asked to perform real-world tasks that demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills, and that's by John Mueller. Uh, Grant Wiggins describes authentic assessment by suggesting that it uses engaging and worthy problems or questions of importance in which students must use knowledge to fashion performances effectively and creatively. The tasks are either replicas of or analogous to the kinds of problems faced by adult citizens and consumers or professionals in the field. That's taken from Wiggins, 1993. Richard Stiggins suggests that performance assessments call upon the examinee to just demonstrate specific skills and competencies, that is, to apply the skills and knowledge they have mastered. And that's taken from Stiggins, 1987. What does authentic assessment look like then? An authentic assessment usually includes a task for students to perform and a rubric by which their performance on the tasks will be evaluated. And that's taken from Mueller, 2011. And finally, we come to the synthesis questions for this video clip, and they are as follows. Number one, why is a non-traditional format a good choice for this course? Number two, According to the video clip, why is it important for all students in this course to participate in the discussion? Number three, why would authentic assessment be used for the assessment of tasks in this course? And number four, speculate on the differences between the characteristics of the learning environment described in this video and the nature of PBL. Why would this non-traditional methodology be chosen for this course? And that brings us to the end of this particular video clip.